February 19th, 2023, Seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and O my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities, he heals all your ills, he redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God? and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all belong to you and you to Christ and Christ to God. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you, over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. 
Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Today's Gospel reading from Matthew 5 verses 38 to 48 invites us to embrace a radical way of living, a way that is not always easy to follow. Jesus' teachings, particularly the call to love our enemies, go against the ways of the world and require a deep level of transformation in our lives. The passage begins with Jesus saying, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. This is a significant shift from the idea of revenge and retaliation that was common in Jesus' time. Instead of responding to violence with more violence, Jesus tells us to love our enemies, to pray for those who persecute us, and to turn the other cheek. Now, this might seem like a difficult teaching to follow. After all, our natural response to those who harm us is often anger and resentment. However, Jesus invites us to look at the situation from a different perspective. He wants us to respond to our enemies with compassion, knowing that they too are loved by God and are in need of healing. It can be incredibly challenging to respond to someone who has hurt us with empathy and understanding. Our initial reaction might be to feel anger, resentment, or a desire for revenge. However, as difficult as it may be, there are many benefits to responding to harm with compassion. Firstly, it's essential to recognize that people who harm us are often struggling with their own pain, trauma, and insecurities. They may be acting out of a place of hurt or fear, and their actions towards us may be a reflection of their own struggles. By responding to them with empathy and understanding, we can help to break the cycle of hurt and anger, and promote healing for both ourselves and others. Secondly, responding with compassion can also help to shift our own mindset and emotions. When we hold on to anger and resentment towards someone who has harmed us, we carry that negativity with us, which can impact our mental and physical health. Responding with empathy and understanding can help us to release those negative emotions and shift our focus towards healing and growth. Lastly, responding with compassion and understanding is a reflection of our own spiritual growth and maturity. It takes courage and strength to respond with love and kindness when someone has hurt us, and it's a powerful way to show that we are not defined by our circumstances, but rather by the choices we make in response to them. Another way to do this is through nonviolence. Nonviolence doesn't mean passivity or weakness. It means actively resisting evil without using violence. We can see the power of nonviolence throughout history, from the civil rights movement in the United States to the peaceful revolution that overthrew the Marcos dictatorship in the Philippines. Nonviolence breaks the cycle of violence and allows for true healing to take place. The peaceful revolution that overthrew the Marcos dictatorship in the Philippines is a historical fact. The revolution, which took place in 1986, is also known as the People Power Revolution, or EDSA Revolution. It was a series of nonviolent and prayerful protests against the authoritarian rule of President Ferdinand Marcos, 
which eventually led to his downfall and the restoration of democracy in the Philippines. The nonviolent tactics used during the revolution, such as prayer vigils, peaceful marches, and the use of flowers and rosaries as symbols of protest, have been cited as a powerful example of the effectiveness of nonviolent resistance. At the heart of Jesus' teachings is the call to perfection in love. He says, Be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. This perfection is not about being flawless or without sin. Rather, it is about reflecting the love of God in all that we do. It is about striving to love as God loves, with no exceptions, and in doing so, becoming more like Him. My dear brothers and sisters, as we reflect on these teachings, let us ask ourselves how we can embrace this radical way of living in our own lives. Are we willing to love those who have hurt us, to forgive those who have wronged us, and to seek healing and reconciliation in all of our relationships? Are we willing to respond to violence with non-violence, to actively work towards peace and justice in our world? Let us remember that this is not something that we can do on our own. We need the grace and guidance of the Holy Spirit to transform our hearts and minds. So let us pray for the strength and courage to live as Christ has called us to. Moreover, the reading reminds us that we can love others because God first loved us. It is His love that enables us to love our enemies, to forgive those who have wronged us, and to seek healing and reconciliation in all of our relationships. We need to draw closer to God in order to be filled with His love, to be transformed by His grace, and to reflect His love to others. Jesus' teachings are not easy, but they are life-giving. When we choose to love our enemies and seek non-violence, we are choosing to follow in the footsteps of Christ. We are choosing to bring healing and hope to a world that so desperately needs it. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us embrace the radical teachings of Christ, to love our enemies, to seek non-violence, and to strive for perfection in love. Let us ask the Lord to help us to live out these teachings in our daily lives and to be witnesses of His love and mercy to all those we encounter. May we find the courage and strength to follow Jesus' example, to love our enemies, and to seek non-violence in all aspects of our lives. Let us remember that in a world that is so often characterized by hate and violence, we have the power to bring healing and hope through our actions of love and non-violence. We have the power to break the cycle of hate and to bring about lasting change. As we go forth from this Mass, let us carry with us the teachings of Christ and the love of God. Let us seek to live out these teachings in our homes, in our workplaces, and in our communities. May we be the instruments of peace and love that God calls us to be. And may the Lord bless us and keep us always in His love. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.